Hey, my name's Dale, and again, welcome to my shop. Just got back from an Idaho sporting event called Keg Pulling. We do it with dogs up here, a little bit uh, different, but I'll put some footage up so you guys can see that. Right now, we're going to talk about the project today is I need to shear some sheet metal. Say that fast three times. Um, my sheet metal shear is only good for about 30 inches, and I need to be in about 50 inch range. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate my bead roller. I'm going to actually take these hubs. These hubs are used for gears and pulleys. Um, you get them at the farm supply place. Uh, my local place is called Big Art. Fantastic place. Um, I've seen them all over the West Coast. Um, if you have one near you, well worth going to to get that big, harder stuff to uh, find. Um, I use these on my bead roller because I can put them on my lathe and cut a profile without having to go to big stock and drill out and all this stuff. It's a big time saver for me. In this situation, we're going to make these sheet metal shearing dies. Now these dies, originally I was going to get some tool steel, mount it up, grind it down, harden it, put it back on. But it's a lot of work, so I decided I could probably get some special welding rod. And that's what I did. I found some welding rod. It is um, 4026N. Um, very expensive, it's about $3 a rod, but uh, I think it's gonna save me a lot of time. It has a tensile strength of 120 PSI, so it's gonna be some tough rod. It's gonna be perfect for making a cutting edge out of it, I think. So what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna weld right on this edge, all the way around, bring it over to the lathe. We're gonna use the uh, post grinder and reshape it and sharpen it up and see how that works out for me. So uh, shall we get to work? Boy, that is some great welding rod. That has to be some of the easiest leg I've ever seen come off after I've welded. Um, I've welded this on a pretty light temperature. Um, I did some experiments a earlier with it hotter, just didn't like it. Um, penetration isn't that big a deal on this, we just need to get it on the surface. You'll also notice that when I welded on it, the very first one I did, I actually welded right on the flat, okay? This one here, I welded on the corner, okay? And I think that's just gonna give me a lot more room to tool with this, so um, let's take it over the lathe and see what happens. So I've already mounted up the post grinder, tool post grinder. Now a lot of people talk about uh, how these grinding can really wear out your bed, and they do. One of the things I do is I first actually I strip all the oil off the bed so there's nothing that the grinding matter can stick to. Then I'll actually clean this light very carefully when I'm done with this project. This here is an old Atlas. It's only got a quarter horse motor, runs a 3450. It's actually way underpowered for grinding. So I just had to make some really light, careful cuts um, with a project like this. There's not a lot that we're doing. So it shouldn't be too big a deal. Um, we will end up having to dress the stone. I don't have a diamond dresser for this right now. Um, somewhere in my shop, we've all experienced that, can't find it. But um, I'm pretty confident I can just get this done old school, grind out it very carefully, and then take a stone to it and uh, sharpen up that way. So let's uh, go to work. So we're going to put this in. We're going to actually put some parallel bars behind it to square it up. Um, it's a, just a great technique. These are probably uh, an inch and a quarter. Secure this. There we go. Pull them out. Definitely don't want to run these with the lathe on. Tighten up. Let's spin it by hand, see how that looks. Looks like it's going to be pretty good. I'll put a dial indicator on it. Um, test that. I'm more worried about the bore being on than I am anything else. Okay, on this Enco lathe, I want to make sure that I'm in low. Um, mark these ABC123, so I remarked them as you can see. HLM, high, low, medium, low, high, medium. It's a good way to keep everything, you know, in a good reference. So when using this tool post grinder, 
Um, we're going to actually rotate it 90 degrees to work with them a little better on the tool. Um, this actually is a pretty nice grinder. Okay, so I backed, off, I backed off the grinder a bit so you can kind of see what the progress is. It's actually going really well. Um, the weld's looking good. It's a little thin on a couple spots, but I think we've got plenty of room. I think I'm going to concentrate on this outside edge next. Um, I'm going to keep the uh, grinder at the exact same position. I do see that the grinding wheel's plugging up just a little bit. I may have to uh, hone that down or, uh, or I should say clean that up a little bit. Um, but let's go for this outside edge and see what happens next. Okay, I want you to notice, actually let me reposition the camera a little bit. I want you to notice how I have this grinding wheel tapered a little bit. What it's going to do, it's going to come in here and it's going to give me a little hollow grind. So it's not a straight vertical side to side cut. It'll be cut in a little bit on the inside and I think that'll help mesh these uh, dies together. So I think we ended up with a pretty nice finish here. Now we're going to do some sharpening with a small stone. Call this project done. Well, we finished up these dies. Um, I couldn't be happier. They really turned out well. So uh, let's put them on the bead roller and um, see how well they work.
Well, I definitely think these dies were a great success. And I'll be using them for a long time. So thanks again for watching. And remember, dream big, design it well, and build it strong. Till next time, take it easy.